book of ages cleft for me let me hide myself in thee let the water and the blood from thy wounded side which flow be of sin the double cure save from wrath and make Dear congregation, what a privilege to be here with you again today. Yes, um, it is weird to be a pastor um, with an empty church, and uh, you might feel it's weird to be um, a congregant without being at church. And you know what is one of the, the things I miss most about this? Is that time you have at the beginning of a service um, where you can just sit and be quiet and really commit your thoughts and your heart uh, to God. And uh, a, there's a peace that, that comes over you. So I want to invite you today to start doing a little thing that I was taught and really helps me just to um, understand that I'm in the presence of the Lord and that He's here now and that this is the focus. We are in the time of Pentecost, and you know that is red, and we are working with the Holy Spirit. And just having a little flame here, um, I know that I am acknowledging, Holy Spirit, you are here. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for meeting me here. Thank you for preparing this time that we are going to spend together from your word. And thank you that you will be the one that's going to restructure and renovate and restore my, um, my being. So when you see this candle, just take the moment and quiet yourself and your thoughts and your heart down and commit yourself to the Lord um, for the following 30 minutes where He comes and He really tends to you. Let's pray together. Holy Spirit, thank you for receiving us in your presence. Thank you that we know that you come and from the word of God, you bring life, living water, living bread. We are not interpreting the word from our own wisdom, but we are receiving wisdom from the Lord our God, as it says in Psalm 60. Thank you for being the active energy, the life force that will take us um, into the future 
and make us the type of people that should live in the kingdom of God. We honor you for today. Amen. Dear congregation, you have heard uh, two sermons in this Pentecost series already, um, a series called Seized, Exposed and uh, Restored, a series where we are really focusing on what God is asking of us to become as believers, to become when we're part of His kingdom, um, to become when we are true disciples. Now, you have heard the introduction um, that there is this core question from what happens in your heart? What is your heart busy with? Because it's from your heart that your rest of your life takes lead. And Yaku explained to you how the different pieces of a person is fitted together in order for us um, to live out there and be the type of people uh, that we understand we're supposed to be. So I've got an image for you. The image on the screen you'll see of a young man, just to explain this a bit better, um, is so that you can see what I'm going to talk about. And you'll see there is the heart. The heart is the center. The heart then um, works with our, our minds and the two choices we have is always one for knowledge and one for emotions. And that goes to our bodies and our bodies react upon that in our social frame and from there on our soul is constituted. So just to make sure that you again understand that when we talk about soul, it is the constitution of the total person um, and everything that happens with that person. And we are not referring to a single piece that will fly away and um, stay in heaven, but we are talking about the whole person. So with this in mind, we are um, going to talk about the importance today of the choices um, we have made. But before we talk um, about the important choice, I want to invite you to come and to confess um, who you are to come and to confess your faith. Because it's from that confession that we're going to take the lead today to understand what we say, who we are, and how we're supposed to operate. So if you know it by heart, do it. Um, you can do it out loud, confess out loud with me, or you can just listen and read it from the screen as we confess our faith now. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In our confession, we read that it's the Holy Spirit we believe in, and that's the Holy Spirit, the power that um, resurrected Jesus from the dead, that we also have in us. And it's this power that takes us so that we can confess that Jesus is our um, Savior and it's because of a loving Father. And from Scripture in Matthew 16, we read the same. But in Matthew 16, there is a specific way Jesus helps His followers to understand how you must position yourself when you become a disciple um, of Him, and why the Holy Spirit is so important, because we cannot do this by ourselves. Again, remember, no matter what I say, it's never from our own intention or our own power. It's always through the power of the Holy Spirit and the anointing um, of, of, of God that He gave upon us when He said, You are my beloved. You are my beloved. So always remember that. Before I read the scripture to you, I must just tell you a bit 
about what happened just previous to this part where Jesus um, is speaking. Now, Jesus came and he spoke to Peter and he just proclaimed that Peter would be one of the great figures in the church. One of the people that really will build the church and the church will always take um, its lead from what Peter did and what he taught. So Peter must have at that stage in time felt quite good about himself. And then um, Jesus came and he declared three times that he would have a, a, a life of suffering and that he would die and uh, um, that there would be um, a resurrection from there. And then Peter came and he said, no, 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 Lord, it's not going to work like that. And a moment thereafter, the Lord called him Satan and stumbling block. But just a moment before that, he, he was one of the most important people in the church. How does that happen? Well, when we see that, we see that we don't always understand how God is um, working this plan of him, this restoration plan um, in, 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 in our lives and in society. And that can create anxiety. That can create fear. So I think Peter only reacted from his fear and his anxiety. He didn't want to go counter to Christ. And that is what happens to us as well. So when you hear stuff today that might make you, uh, might make you anxious or create some fear, just hold on a moment. Because we're going to talk about life and death. But we're going to talk about true life through serious death from God that gives us the chance to choose and re-choose and experience life in its fullness. So let's read Matthew 16 from verse 24, and then afterwards um, we're going to talk a bit about what happened in that passage. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Dear congregation, I hope you heard this. If we want to follow Christ, we need to deny ourselves and we need to take up our cross and we need to follow him. So the first point here, Jesus is talking about life and death. That's why he came. That's why he died. That's why he was resurrected because for people, for mankind's life, God is serious to make a plan for it. It is not because of him wanting to show off. It's because of your life and my life that he did what he did. So this is truly a life and death situation. So he says, if you want to follow him, you need to deny yourself. Not mutilate yourself or disregard yourself. Denying yourself, we're going to unpack now. Then from there on, he says, take up your cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me will find it. For God, it's also about having life and losing life. And therefore, this uh, topic for today is, but I want to flourish. If you want to have a life where you, where you flourish, you need to deny yourself. Now, that sounds totally counterproductive. If you want a life that fails, choose your own agenda. Make yourself the priority of your life. And you'll lose your life. So it's clear in this passage, Jesus um, draws a clear line. If you want to fail in life, choose yourself. If you want to flourish in life, deny yourself. Choose Him. Because God alone, the creator of your life, knows best what He intended to do with your life. And giving it as an offer to Him, your life can once again become what it was supposed to be when it was created. Then it goes further, it says, What good will it be for a man if he gains the whole world, yet forfeits his soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? Remember we said soul, the total person. God is speaking about the total person here, not only um, 
a small piece for life here after, but the total person now, here. For the Son of Man is going to come in His Father's glory with the angels, and then He will reward each person according to what He has done. There will be fruit upon your actions. I tell you the truth, some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in His kingdom. So from this passage, we see that today we are really confronted with something serious. Fail in life or flourish. And fail doesn't mean the mistakes you made. Mistakes makes us lost. Mistakes doesn't lead to failure. Failure, Dallas Willard wants to define a bit different. When we read this passage, we see that failure means choosing not to have God as the center of your life, the one that knows the best. Please hear me correct today. This is not just making him the king of your life. This is a part where you can face, you do not know what is best for you. You do not know what is best for your own life. You don't want to choose what is best for your own life. You want God to be the initiator of what is happening in who you are, what you do, and where you go. That is true life. Denying yourself is when you give that life privilege, that purpose, back to God. Now please, we're going to ask the Holy Spirit to come and expose us, because sometimes we tend to do this, um, but we do this for our own agenda we do this so that we can feel safe. We do this because we think it's the right thing to do. No. We need to answer when God comes and He says, I want to seize you. And then we give over. We, we totally hand over to His seizing and let Him direct us there. I am referring to another picture. You can see it here on the board of a guy taking a selfie where he gives out food. So there is no goodness there. That is self-idolatry. Um, yes, you heard me say it. He is showing how good he is and how good he sees himself. And sometimes we do that as well. We think we are doing it for the kingdom, but it is just to show that we think it's the right thing to do. So the Spirit is going to come and expose our whole being. Because from Scripture we read, carry your cross. And that means the cross must come in my heart, in my mind, in my body, in my social interaction, and in my soul. To see that it's authentic. To see that it's Christ-centered. To see that it is Holy Spirit driven. That is the importance of the, of, of, the, um, of the cross we carry. So from this passage you see that we are seized by God, exposed by the cross, and then renewed, rebuilt, restored, because we follow Him, and we become the type of person that um, lives like He lived. Okay, so from this, let's look at a heart then that fails. A heart that fails is a heart that chooses to sidestep God, chooses to take Him out of the focus, and chooses to put myself at the center. It's only about me, my feelings, and whatever in society can serve me best. If your heart chooses this, the next reaction of your mind is to make sure that everything that happens around you is centered on you and you alone. You will structure your money, you will structure your relationships, you will structure your investments, you will structure your energy, you will structure everything to work for one purpose and one purpose alone, yourself. And God won't, over, won't even be in that conversation. From that, your mind directs your body and its senses to make sure that anything that your, your body does must be stuff that acknowledges your sense of feeling good and feeling great about yourself. And this is where addictions comes from. Because we only live then 
on central um, value and central um, validation. And then we drink, we smoke, we gamble, or we, we eat, or we um, go to, to certain clubs or certain places, or even to certain churches where we look good and feel good and feel they are serving me. From that, our social relations are always in conflict when it's not going according to my plan. And you can see that when um, you are uh, between your family, when you are um, in, back in society, talking about the government, talking about corona, um, you can gauge your conversations. If your conversations are full of negativity and hatred because it's not as you think, there comes a little light bulb of the cross needs to come here. The cross needs to, to be here. And then from there on, um, we've got a soul that's really disrupted, a soul that's really depressed, a soul that doesn't have any peace. But if we choose to give ourselves to God, to deny ourselves and make sure that He treasures us, there is life. You have purpose. It works like when you've got a goldsmith and he is working on a ring. There is many instances where we make a mistake and that ring needs to go back into the furnace and the gold needs to be melted again. When we failed, it doesn't take the value of the gold away. It just means we need to do or redo the ring. And God will come. The Spirit is that fire, that furnace. Yes, it's tough. Yes, it's difficult. Um, but it's always life-giving and gives us a chance to um, restore. So you are the creator um, of this life. But if it happens according to the plan of God and it happens that there's a mistake, it doesn't take away the value. And the Spirit comes and He um, he is our furnace and He melts that gold again so that it can once again become what God dreamed for us. What did He dream? Well, this text shows us that first of all, that if we want to live, live a, a life that flourishes, that doesn't fail, um, we need to make God the center of our understanding of purpose, the center of our not only living in our eternal life, but of our being and the reason why we exist. You must really come to a place where, where you acknowledge a plaque, a place where you acknowledge God. I don't know what's best for me. Um, I hand over my life to you. From there you will see the purpose of existence is only two things. To love God and to love your neighbor. And use that. Go through your life. See in the different um, facets of who you are and where you, um, where you go through, the, through your life. Am I loving God? Am I loving my neighbor in these different places? And if you're not, then it's there where you are exposed. And the Spirit comes to um, regenerate or rebuild and restore you. You need to love God and you need to love your neighbor. How do you do that? You do that through disciplines, spiritual disciplines, that takes the, um, the uncomfortable, the um, not so well known, the habits not um, uh, known to us, and makes it the new normal. And what better time to understand that as now, the COVID time, where there was the, um, the unrealistic, the couldn't believe this can happen. And God comes and He takes this and He says, now this is the new normal. One where you can forgive. One where you can love. The unexpected becomes the expected. So we need to have spiritual habits. From there we need to give it time. Yes, over time those ha habits will come and transform your whole being. Your mind, your heart, your body your social relations, your soul. But give it time. But be invested. And at the end, you will have what? You will have a kingdom citizen that when the Lord comes 
with the glory of God. He will see the type of person that you can expect in the kingdom of God. Because you will look, live, react, think, feel like such a person. Dear congregation, what a privilege, but serious place to be to make that choice today. And that's why you have this little white flag. This little white flag you know from all the war stories is a flag that re represents your surrender. You surrender yourself to be conducted with as God wants to conduct without having a say anymore. Knowing that He will look after you as a loving father um, looks after his children. This flag is one that we need to hoist, but it's difficult. So take the time through the coming weeks in this Pentecost series to contemplate what it means to surrender, to be seized, to expose, and to restore. It is a privilege to have this because from here on you can have a life with meaning even if you are locked down. I know a lot of people feel so purposeless in this time because they can't go anywhere, they can't have any connections. But it's because they don't understand that loving God and loving their neighbor is the only purpose they need. And that can then crystallize in many different ways. May you have the most blessed time um, in walking and being seized, walking on this road and being exposed, walking on this journey and being restored. Let's pray together. Holy Spirit, thank you for exposing us to your grace. Thank you for seizing us even when we are so hard-headed and single-minded. Thank you for restoring us, even though we want to decide how that must look. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for bestowing upon us the same power that resurrected Jesus um, from his tomb, from the dead. Thank you that we are not alone. And I really come and I ask that you will come uh, in and expose who we are as kingdom children, as kingdom citizens, so that we can also show this light to the world. Amen. Dear congregation, you will see um, on the screen, there's three questions that you can now um, ponder upon at home, that you can um, discuss and that you can journal. These questions really ask of you, um, how your life will be implicated now that you know the only um, purpose is to love God and love your neighbor. What is the effect of that on how you see yourself and have you made the serious choice that God is the God of all the different facets of your life? Please make sure that you keep this rhythm with you. I'm going to give you time now to tithe, um, to give to the Lord, um, or your offering and have the time to write down the questions or pause the screen and uh, get these questions so that you can really have um, a great and a fruitful time of reflection um, in, in your family and throughout the week. It's always a pleasure being with you. It's always a pleasure just um, receiving any type of uh, um, interaction from you. So WhatsApp message, the pastor that gave the sermon really would like to journey with you further if there's any questions or any comments. So feel free to do that. This is also the month where we um, contribute to um, Hope and Whip, um, the food for the hungry children, and we are feeding um, more than 250 people a week, and it's been over a thousand mouths already fed from um, Constantia Crane and the network we are in. So thank you. And we are, um, 
we are doing this and uh, uh, perceiving on this road. Um, so your contributions are so, so, so special to us. Thank you for checking in. Uh, thank you for your prayers. And uh, we hope that you will have a blessed and a wonderful time with your loved ones. Receive the blessing of a loving father that looked upon you to acknowledge the uh, value of your life through his son's offering, an uh, offering that offered in life and it's now part of your existence um, through the working of the Holy Spirit. Amen.